Hey guys, Dr. Davin Lim, board certified dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about something rather controversial, uh, but it's proven. And that's ethnic skin or darker skin types, they age less as compared to lighter or fairer skin types. So that's a known fact. Um, but then the big question is, why does this happen? And most importantly, what can we do about it? And what treatments work for different skin types? So let's get into this video. First things first, when we talk about skin aging, there are various components. We can talk what's on the skin, for example, wrinkles. We can also talk about pigmentation, whether it be brown pigmentation or red pigmentation because of broken capillaries. And then below that, we can talk about laxity and also the thickness of the dermis. In other words, the collagen and the elastin quality. And then below that, we can talk about volume changes. And then below that, we can talk about skeletal changes. So in the context of this video, I'll only be talking about what happens on the skin. Because quickly, and I'll summarize this in 20, 30 seconds, when you look at different races, there are different anatomical changes within races. So basically, for example, when we're talking about Asian function and skeletal structure, it's very different compared to someone who's, for example, African-American or someone who's Caucasian. So first things first, why does melanin play an important role? So melanin basically is the pigment that you've, it's found on skin. And everyone has melanin apart from albinos. So melanin itself protects the skin. The um, differences between darker skin compared to lighter skin is not in the number of melanocytes or pigment cells, but in the way they produce the pigment. So they produce pigment called melanin and they are found in melanosomes. And melanosomes are packets that contain this uh, pigment. And in darker skin types, these packets are larger, they're more scattered, they're more numerous and they clump to form big bundles that actually protect the skin from UV radiation. So the primary source of protection in darker skin types is due to more melanin. Melanin basically gives an SPF of greater than 15. But when you think about it greater than 15, you're thinking, geez, the sunscreen's got an SPF of 50. But 15 is huge because 15 is actually a factor of burning. So let's say if a lighter skin type burns in uh, one minute, a darker skin type will burn in 15 minutes. And for example, if it's four minutes, darker skin type will burn in 60 minutes. So that's a huge advantage in the context of darker skin because melanin absorbs UV, both UVB, UVA, and decreases the amount of breakdown of your collagen and elastin. So the first thing is a much darker upper layer of skin. Now we go below that surface, we go into the dermis. And here the fundamental differences are differences in the cells which produce collagen and elastin. So with darker skin type, you have larger fibroblasts. So the fibroblasts make your collagen, make your elastin, make your ground substance. So these cells are larger, they're more numerous. And not only that, we call them, they're brisk. In other words, when they are excited, due to energy or due to trauma or due to burns or due to thermal heat. Basically, these um, suckers produce a lot more collagen and a lot more elastin. This coupled with the fact that darker skin type has a thicker dermis means that the chances of wrinkling is often delayed by at least a decade, sometimes two decades in the context of darker skin. There are, however, catches, because if you increase the melanin in darker skin types, a darker skin, including myself, we're very prone towards post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So hence, we can't use big, crazy lasers or super deep peels, because as a result, we may produce more pigment. And post-inflammatory pigmentation is basically difficult to treat and difficult to remove without the use of lasers. So that's the first disadvantage. The second disadvantage is that when we talk about increased fibroblasts, yes, we produce more collagen and more elastin, but the flip side is that overproduction of abnormal collagen results in hypertrophic and keloid scarring. Everything's not just bright. It's there are pros and there are cons in the context of skin type. Those are the fundamental reasons why darker skin types do well with certain treatments. So what can we do about it? What treatments are there that skew towards lighter skin types 
and then treatments geared towards darker skin types. So we talk about lighter skin types. They can have treatments, for example, like ablative lasers, whether it be CO2 or erbium lasers, or really deep peels, including medium depth, but also the phenol or the phenol crotonol peels, which go right down to the actual um, mid papillary and reticular dermis. They are suited for deeper treatments. However, if you try those treatments in a darker skin type, you're gonna end up with a disaster. So conversely, when it comes to darker skin types, what treatments work well? So darker skin types do well with pico lasers. So pico lasers basically target pigment and they can decrease pigment, but at the same time stimulate collagen. So pico lasers are great. Gentle fractional lasers are good as well. You can't have crazy fractional lasers, but gentle ones do well. Where darker skin types really excel is in the application of non-surgical skin tightening devices. So these devices include heating devices. So how I divide heating devices is kind of easy to understand. You can have high heat, for example, if you're gonna um, cook something in the microwave for a minute, you put it on high, that's your high foo. So you can think, HIFU, H-I-F-U, think high as in high as in high for microwave. That way it, it creates a lot of energy in a short period of time. So these devices include the famous Altherapy and Ultraforma. And the reason why they work better is because generally speaking, there's more collagen to contract in darker skin types. And generally speaking, the quality of the collagen is better because there's less fragmentation from the sun because that's protected because of the melanin but also the fibroblasts or the, or the collagen producing cells, they're more reactive. So in other words, with a little bit of heat, with a little bit of energy, they tend to be more productive when it comes to collagen and elastin. Now the flip side is that if we want to cook collagen slow, in other words, we want to stimulate the fibroblasts slowly, it's much like putting your um, food in the defrost in the microwave. And that one is radio frequency energy. So radio frequency energy, yes, you can have high heat, for example, radio frequency microneedling, where you're delivering a very short amount of pulse over a very short amount of time. That one can be high-ish heat, but generally speaking, it's less painful in this, less heat compared to HIFU. So radio frequency devices can actually deliver for example, in uh, close to a second, so a millisecond, all the way to a couple of minutes. And some of them actually slow heat over a period of 45 minutes to an hour. So instead of your temperatures reaching, for example, you know, 67 to 69 degrees Celsius, that is, in the skin using HIFU, the heat generated from RF devices are generally lower, but the heating is over there for a longer period of time. Now, when we talk about these devices and applying that for lighter skin types, remember I'm talking about not the possibility, but the probability of things working. So obviously they're outliers when you look at the bell curve, if someone has got good skin that's further protected, in other words, has not got very much in the way of sun damage, and have a history of, I guess, a family or ethnic history of somewhere like um, uh, Eastern European, where, for example, Russia, Czechoslovakia, they usually have thicker dermises, and also if they reside over there, chances are they're gonna be more sun protected. So these cohort of um, lighter skin types can do very well with things like HIFU and also the RF microneedling. So once again, guys, it's not about me saying that it won't work. All I'm saying is like for like, the probability of skin tightening devices working for darker skin types is a lot higher compared to lighter skin types. Something that's not really said in much, both in the literature and also most importantly, it's not out there uh, when it comes to promoting these non-tightening devices. So it's an important concept to understand. Now, when it comes to other methods to help with skin aging, so things like uh, toxins and fillers, there's certain differences. We can go into that later stage because it's a different way of um, filling. And also in the context of the skin ethnicities, the different acceptable, I guess, ways of how we can enhance that to look good but also keep their ethnicity so that's a whole new video guys i hope you liked that video please like share comment and by all means subscribe bye for now